Hello, my name is Neil Ford. I'm a, a software architect and meme wrangler at ThoughtWorks. For the past couple of years, I've been working on a book called The Productive Programmer. And this is a book about how developers can become more productive. One of the things that I've identified in The Productive Programmer are these principles of productivity. One of those principles is this idea of acceleration, which is doing things faster and ways to do things faster on your machine. And one of the aspects of acceleration are keyboard shortcuts. Um, keyboard shortcuts are important for developers because when you're coding, you always want to prefer the keyboard to the mouse. A lot of you have written applications for heads down data entry personnel. And uh, what is their number one request for usability? Don't make me use the mouse. So why do they hate the mouse so much? Well, they know that it slows them down. And I have news for you. As developers, we are essentially specialized data entry personnel. And so every time you take your hands off your keyboard, you're slowing yourself down. So it behooves you to learn as many keyboard shortcuts as you possibly can. But that's easy for me to say, but have you seen the list of all the keyboard shortcuts that exist in these environments? If you open up that keyboard list, it's daunting because it's page after page after page, and it's full of really useful information like to move the cursor one character to the right, use the right arrow key, which is great because I never would have figured that out for myself. But hidden amongst all of that noise is a lot of really useful information. So what I'm going to do is give you some techniques for remembering these keyboard shortcuts, and then I'm going to show you a few of them. So one of the things that you can do is make yourself use the shortcut even if you've gotten there another way. And this is particularly true for shortcuts that are on menu items. Because uh, on menu items, they list the shortcut key next to it. Even if you've used the menu to get there, dismiss the menu and actually use the keyboard shortcut to invoke whatever that operation is. And that'll help you remember it because it provides a context for you. You can also have someone or something pester you about it. Uh, one of my colleagues at ThoughtWorks is notorious anytime you pair a program with him, anytime you do something in the IDE that could be done with a keyboard shortcut, he will force you to undo what you just did and then do it three times in succession using the keyboard shortcut, undoing it every time which is intensely annoying, but it's also really nice because it forces you to remember those things really fast. And uh, within a week of pairing with him, you are a much, much better developer because you have been through his boot camp of learning keyboard shortcuts. But a lot of people don't have the luxury of having a pair programmer around. Fortunately, there are some tools that make it easy to do this as well. And one of them is the Key Promoter plugin for IntelliJ. So here's how Key Promoter works. Let's say that I have a uh, something that I want to um, use a menu to select that has a keyboard shortcut. So if I come up here to refactor rename, notice Shift F6 actually does refactor rename. Look at the bottom part of my screen when I do this. Key Promoter will both tell me what I should have used and then tell me how many times I've done it wrong. I've done it wrong seven times now, so if I come up and do this again, it'll yell at me again. And this is a perfect combination of a carrot and stick, because it tells you what you could have used and shames you by telling you how many times you've done it wrong. That's a really, really useful combination, because it will, uh, and once that gets to double digits, you start thinking, man, I'm a loser, I just can't learn stuff, and so it helps you uh, learn that. Here's another trick that it does. Let's say that I come up here and do an, a menu item for export settings. So there's one time. I'm going to come up and do it again. Export settings again. And I'm going to do it one more time. The third time I do it, Key Promoter will actually intervene and say, look, clearly you love that menu item dearly. Why don't you go and create a keyboard shortcut for it? And I'll help you. And when you click yes here, it'll take you over to the keyboard settings dialog, and you can actually set a keyboard shortcut for export settings so that you can stop using the mouse to get to it. Once you say OK or cancel here, then it will actually invoke that menu item for you. So it intervenes on your behalf, 
and uh, tries to make you more productive for the things that you use all the time to encourage you to create keyboard shortcuts for them. So really, really useful. There's another one, uh, a plugin for Eclipse called Key Prompter for Eclipse that goes even one step further. Does the exact same key pro thing Key Promoter does, but it will also let you disable the menu items so they no longer work and you can only invoke them through the keyboard shortcuts. Uh, that's pretty draconian, but boy, you better believe that you're learning the keyboard shortcuts then because it's essentially turned the menus off. Another thing you can do is repeat them to yourself. You don't have to shout them. You can actually whisper them, and this sounds silly, but doing so forces it into a different part of your brain, and it makes it so that it's easier to remember in the future because it's using more of your brain. And all of these things work really well for uh, keyboard shortcuts that show up on menu items. But what about all that long list that we had uh, that include a bunch of things that don't have menu items? So here's what you do. You take that long list and go through it one more time. And all the things that are cool that you didn't know existed that sound handy, copy them either to a, a separate document or uh, write them down. Writing them down is actually better because it uses a different part of your brain. Or create things like flashcards for them and keep a little stack next to your keyboard uh, because all you really have to remember is that the capability exists. Even if you don't remember what the exact shortcut is, knowing that the capability exists and that you have a quick way to get to that capability is all you actually need. And then when it comes time to use that in the future, you know the capability is there and you can go and find out what it is. And of course, if you have flashcards, you can torture your coworkers at lunch over keyboard shortcuts. So here are a few that I have harvested from both IntelliJ and Eclipse, really useful keyboard shortcuts that people don't seem to use very much. And the first one is this one, go to class. And there's also go to resource. My contention in the Productive Programmer is that all developer hierarchies have gotten too deep. You look at the typical uh, package structure for most Java projects and it goes on and on and on. And navigating through trees by hand is a total waste of time. Because all you're really doing is proving to your computer that you have hand-eye coordination. That you can visually acquire something, click on it to select it. And that's a huge waste of time. If you know the name of the thing that you want, why are you wasting time proving to the computer that you can visually cite it and click on it? That's what go to class does. So now I can just hit the hotkey and it will take me to all the classes that map to that name. And it's easy for me to get there. But it's even better than that because uh, if I do this and just enter the pattern of capital letters, it will find the files having that pattern of capital letters in it. And this is really handy because this is a much shorter way to have to type in a long name and you can frequently remember the pattern of capital letters. So this is a really super quick, easy way to get to those files. And if it's non-Java files, you can add shift to this keyboard shortcut in both environments and get to non-Java source files and the same ignoring uh, lowercase letters in between works there as well. So that's the only way that I tend to get to files now. If I know the name, just type in a fragment of it and go grab it. The next one is one that's very handy because I'm very lazy, and that's introduce variable. So let's go back here, and I'll use introduce variable. So let's say I need a date. I'm too lazy to actually type this in, and so that keyboard shortcut that I just showed you uh, is introduce variable which will type the left hand side for me. Let's say that I want something like calendar get instance. Introduce variable and it will give me calendar and if I come in do the same thing again it'll offer calendar 1 because it knows that there's already a calendar variable in scope and so it'll automatically give me calendar 1. What if I come do something like this? Of course everybody knows about the intention hotkeys. Now it gives me calendar 2 but you'll also notice that it gives me calendar 
as the type because it's smart it knows about uh, types and in fact it gives me Gregorian calendar, calendar, object, serializable, clonable and comparable because these are the object parents and also the interface parents for this class and so it's very smart about the way it assigns things. And I actually have this project set for uh, JDK 1.4, uh, so it'll yell at me a little bit for doing this, but the, the, uh, it still works. So let's say if I come in and do something like this. Now I can do introduce variable. It gives me the option for set or hash set, but notice that I can come here and say abstract set, abstract collection, all the way down to set integer and let me do the right kind of declaration. The thing that's yelling at me about me here that I'm on a 1.4 project, but the hot the shortcut keys still work. So that's a really, really useful way of uh, generating variable declarations because let's face it, it can generate variable declarations uh, names at least as good as you can. So why not let it do that work? Even if you want to type in a new name, it still does the typing, the equals, and all the other syntactic uh, stuff for you. The next one is also really nice, not a lot of people seem to know about this, escalating selection. So let's find an actual chunk of code. This looks like a pretty good one. Uh, one of the problems in traditional editors is that you have to know a lot of different keyboard shortcuts to do similar things. So let's say I want to select the current token, the current line, the current line with the terminator, the current block. All those might be separate keyboard shortcuts. But what escalating selection lets you do, and I'm using the exact same keyboard shortcut every time, uh, Apple W on the Mac or Control W on Windows, that will select the current token, and then the next time you hit it, it'll select one larger scope, and then one larger scope, which includes the semicolon, then the entire line, then the body, then the block with the uh, open and close braces, then the entire block, and then the method body, and method body with the curly braces, entire method, entire class. That's escalating selection. And it's really smart about the way that it grabs tokens because if I come here and grab that token, the next time I hit the hotkey, it's just going to get the next level out, which is really nice if I need to typecast something else the same way, I can go grab this very easily. One of the cool side effects of this is to be able to do stuff like this. So I'll do escalating selection to grab that whole thing, and I can actually use uh, Apple Shift and Arrow on the Mac or uh, Control Shift on Windows to actually move these declarations around. In case I wanted them in a different order or I wanted to alphabetize and put them in a more logical order, it's easier for me to move entire chunks of code around like that. And in fact, you can do that for entire methods. So if I come down here and do escalating selection for the whole method, I can change the order of my methods really fast, like that. So escalating selection is really super useful because it's one shortcut key to do a variety of different things. This is another really nice feature that IntelliJ has, recently edited files, in the reverse order that you use them. So the last file I was in before this one was called Shopping Cart, and I can get to it. Now you'll notice the one that I just left is there. So this is in the reverse order in which I use them, uh, which is nice because as developers, we tend to bounce around amongst three or four, a handful of different files as we're working on stuff. This recently edited file list is really nice because it's separate from the files that we actually have open on in the editor because these are the ones that I've edited in the reverse order in which I've edited them most recently. Eclipse doesn't actually have this. Eclipse does have control E, which is all the current files uh, open in buffers, uh, which is close to this, but not quite, because IntelliJ will actually pick up files that aren't currently open, but ones that you've uh, edited very recently. This is another really powerful thing, symbol list. What symbol list lets you do is go in and find actual symbols in files. So you'll notice that I have a statement symbol in this file, and I can start typing the name of it, and it will tell me there's where statement is. But it is a much broader than this because it'll actually find all the things that match that symbol anywhere that's currently on my path, and that includes even things like um, uh, JavaScript files. So I have a connection, for example, 
These are all the places that connections show up, but if I just do a partial part of this, notice that uh, a whole bunch of things that are in context in this project will show up under connection. So this allows you to navigate your files if you know the name of one of the variables or one of the methods in your file, but don't know the actual um, a file name or don't want to think about the file name. Here's add item from cart item. All I need to know is that there's an add item method around there somewhere. I don't even have to think about what class it's in because this will let me do an incremental search over all the symbols in the entire project and find the things that I want by going directly to them. And of course, with a combination of this, it allows you to very easily navigate back and forth in a really quick way. The last one of these I want to talk about is incremental search. Incremental search lets you do this. So Alt F3 here. Now I can start typing the name of something like connection, and it'll find all the instances for me, and then F3 will take me to all the instances of it, all of which are highlighted. This is a little bit better than doing it with uh, the dialog because when you do a control F or an Apple F, you get a, you get a dialog in the way and it uh, kind of uh, interferes with your nav navigability of the file. And of course, you'll also notice that when you do this, it highlights all the places that connection shows up here on the right hand side so that you can navigate to them with the mouse if you do want to uh, uh, make the mistake of going and, and actually touching your mouse and escape unhighlights all of those guys and uh, hides them again. So that's a collection of some of the keyboard shortcuts and cool stuff that you can do uh, in IntelliJ and, and also incidentally in Eclipse. Uh, this is a really, really important way to speed up your productivity as a programmer. Learn all these keyboard shortcuts, keep them close by, and you'll end up being a much, much more productive programmer. Thanks for listening. Uh, again, my name is Neil Ford. I work for ThoughtWorks, and I speak on the No Fluff Just Stuff tour. And as you can tell, I'm a big, huge fan of IntelliJ. Thanks, and uh, hope to see you at one of the tour stops soon.